Hi, I'm going to show you how to solve RC circuits. So the term RC circuit typically refers to a resistor and a capacitor in series and perhaps also includes a battery. So if it includes a battery, you would call it a charging RC circuit. If it doesn't include a battery, we would call it a discharging RC circuit. I'm going to solve a charging RC circuit. So here's kind of your stereotypical charging RC circuit. We would have a battery of known EMF. We would have some sort of switch, and we'll get to why that's important later. And then we have a resistor and capacitor in series. It actually doesn't matter which order they come in, but I'll go ahead and uh, draw the capacitor first. But our solutions will not matter or will not be affected by the order. Okay, so a battery, capacitor, resistor of known quantities. We're going to close this switch and then make predictions as to lots of different physical quantities. Okay? Uh, we're going to predict the voltage across each of these uh, circuit elements. We're going to predict the current through the circuit and we're going to predict the charge on the capacitor. So four different physical quantities to calculate when I want to do this. So let's go ahead and get, get some numbers for these quantities. So the battery EMF is your stereotypical 9 volt battery and then we have a resistor with a resistance of 700 ohms and then we have a capacitor with a capacitance of 3 millifarads. Okay and so the reason that the switch is important is because there's actually a, a time dependence to RC circuits, both the charging version here and the discharging one without the battery. And so the quantities that we calculate will be different depending on when we actually measure them, um, depending on the time from the uh, closing of the switch. So really nothing is happening before we close the switch. The battery has 9 volts. There's no current, no charge presumably, unless we charge it somehow before. Um, no current flowing through this circuit. So nothing, nothing terribly interesting happens. But at the moment we close that switch, then a bunch of stuff starts to happen. Okay, so what will happen is our fictitious positively charged current, our char positive charge will flow out of the positive side of the battery, uh, go through the wire, and it will start to charge the capacitor. So we'll get a buildup of charge, positive charge on this side. We'll actually get a buildup of negative charge on this side, and current will actually flow through the resistor. Okay, so an important parameter for all of RC circuits, whether charging or discharging, is what's called a time constant. And we use the symbol uh, Greek letter tau for that, and it's simply equal to the resistance times the capacitance. So let's go ahead and calculate that first, um, because we're going to use that in a whole bunch of subsequent calculations. So we take 700 ohms, and we multiply by 3 times 10 to the minus 3, and we find that the time constant uh, is 2.1 ohm farads. Okay, but uh, an ohm farad is actually a second, so it's a, a certain amount of time, and SI units are seconds. Okay, and roughly what that tells us is it tells us how roughly how much time it takes to lose about two-thirds of the current in this circuit. Okay, and the time constant is actually associated with more than just current, but that's one, one way to think about it. Okay, so the analysis of, of this, the complete analysis actually requires you to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, and then uh, definition of current, and then you get um, some fairly sophisticated math in order to drive the equations for the RC circuit. So I'm not going to drive those for you, we're just going to use the results in order to, to make some calculations. Okay, so at t equals zero, so we call t equals zero the time when we close that switch, it's actually very easy to solve. So the charge in the capacitor hasn't had time to build up. Okay, if it starts with no charge, it takes charge, it takes time for the battery to push charge on, or push or pull charge onto that capacitor. So the, um, the charge simply is zero. And because the charge is zero, using the definition of capacitance, um, we can solve for the voltage across the capacitor and find that the voltage across the capacitor also equals zero. And then we can uh, make an assertion about the voltage across the resistor. It will be 
9 volts, it gets the full battery voltage at the beginning. Okay? And then we have to do one calculation instead of just simply making assertions. We can uh, calculate the current, okay? and I'm not using a subscript for that one because the current through the battery is the current through the resistor. It's also what we would call a displacement current for the uh, for the capacitor, basically how much charge, how much current appears to be going through the capacitor as positive and negative charge builds up on it, and we just use Ohm's law. So uh, we take the voltage divided by the resistance, throw that into your calculator, and you get an answer of uh, 12.9 times 10 to the minus three. So uh, we'll use um, milliamps. Okay, so that's what happens right at first. Okay, we slam that switch down. Um, charge hasn't had a chance to migrate to the capacitor, so it's uncharged, no voltage. Um, so the resistor gets all of the voltage, and then uh, we can calculate the current using Ohm's law. So one sort of non-trivial calculation. Um, now let's calculate what happens after uh, 2.1 seconds. So we're gonna wait one time constant and see what happens. Okay, so at T, equals 2.1 seconds, but we could calculate uh, it at any time. We could do one second, 10 seconds, whatever, it doesn't matter. We can, we can calculate it using the formulas for the, uh, for the charging RC circuit. Okay, so we'll, um, we can do this in, in any order we want, but I'm, I'll go ahead and calculate the voltage across the capacitor. So the formula for voltage across the capacitor is a function of time other than at T equals zero and T equals infinity uh, will be the battery voltage times one minus e to the minus t, okay, so the time it actually is, divided by the time constant. Okay, and so let's throw in the, throw in the numbers, so nine volts, one minus e to the minus 2.1 over 2.1, so we get e to the minus one there. And if we throw that into our calculator, we get that the voltage across the capacitor is 5.69 volts. Okay, so uh, we started with zero, and actually it builds up, the voltage builds up from zero uh, to, to 5.69 volts. Okay, and then we can calculate the voltage across the resistor using its formula. So voltage across the resistor looks fairly similar. We just don't have that one minus there, but it's the battery voltage, e to the minus t over tau, and we can throw in those numbers, uh, e to the, oops, throw in the numbers. So we throw in, uh, 9 volts, the battery voltage, e to the minus 2.1, which is the time, over the time constant, which is also 2.1. And I throw that into my calculator and get the voltage across the resistor is equal to 3.31 volts. Okay, and if you're doing some math in your head, you might have noticed that the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the resistor add up to the 9 volts. They always should. Okay, that's what Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law would tell us. Okay, a couple more things to calculate. We want to calculate the charge on the capacitor and the current through the circuit. So we can do that in a number of ways. You can uh, calculate charge using some sort of exponential function, um, or we can just use definition of capacitance, solve for charge. So I'm going to do that. I think that's a little bit easier than using exponential functions, but either way should work. So um, that's charge or capa definition of capacitance, solve for charge. So I take the capacitance in SI units, three times 10 to the minus three, multiplied by the voltage, 5.69 volts, and I get that the charge on the capacitor is equal to uh, four, let's see, 17.1 uh, millicoulombs. Okay, so that's, there's a positive charge over here, 17.1 milli, millicoulombs, there's a negative charge right here. 17.1 millicoulombs. Okay, and then I can get the current. Again, I could use an exponential de decay function, or I can just calculate it using the voltage across the resistor, divide by the resistance, Ohm's law, solve for current. So 3.31 over 700. I throw that into my calculator, and it spits out uh, 4.7 milliamps. Okay, so that's what I expect to read with an ammeter. Okay, so once again, a little bit more difficult here, but at this particular moment in time, this is what's happening, okay? Uh, we can also do 
uh, the, at t equals infinity, so that's one that we can simply assert. At t equals infinity, uh, we would have uh, the, volta the voltage across the resistor and the current would be, uh, we can simply assert that they are zero. Okay? So those are exponential decay functions. Eventually they uh, wind down to zero. The voltage across the capacitor, we can simply assert that is equal to nine volts. And then using definition of capacitance like I uh, did right here, I'd get that it has uh, 27 milli, uh, milli coulombs. So Q, 27 milli coulombs. Okay, so uh, sometimes with these RC circuits, whether charging or discharging, we can just make an assertion, you know, some things are zero or some things are the battery voltage or whatever. Um, other times, particular at some random point in time, uh, you need to grind out the typically some exponential uh, functions and then also apply, perhaps apply the definition of capacitance or Ohm's law to calculate these other quantities. Okay, so um, the math actually, when we remove the battery and take a charged capacitor and discharge it through the resistor, actually looks a lot similar. There's some, there's some subtle uh, differences, but a lot of the, the, the same techniques apply. Still have a time constant uh, and all that, so you should be able to, uh, to to do calculations. But to some extent, in this with this particular topic, you just have to use the formulas that are given to you uh, simply because the derivation of them is uh, is it requires some uh, some fairly advanced math. So uh, yeah, so don't worry if you don't understand where this this formula comes from, for example. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed enjoyed watching this and I'll see you next time.